Interference and diffraction provide the best evidence that light is wave-like. As we learned earlier, waves can be either longitudinal or transverse. Sound waves are longitudinal, where vibratory motion is along the direction of wave travel. Transverse waves occur when the vibratory motion is perpendicular or transverse to the direction of wave travel. Little Phyllis photon shakes a rope up and down, producing a transverse wave that travels along the rope in one plane. We say that such a wave is plane polarized, meaning the waves traveling along the rope are confined to a single plane. Here we have a vertically polarized wave. Vibration from side to side produces a horizontally polarized wave. If we think in terms of classical physics, meaning non-quantum, an electromagnetic wave is produced by a vibrating electron in an atom. Vertical electron vibration means the electric field is vibrating up and down, which emits light that is vertically polarized. If the electron vibrates horizontally, the electric field vibrates left and right or side by side and emits light that is horizontally polarized. There is also a magnetic field that vibrates perpendicular to the electric field. So polarization of light waves demonstrates they are transverse. A common light source, such as an incandescent lamp, a fluorescent lamp, or a candle flame, emits light that is unpolarized. This is because there is no preferred vibrational direction for the accelerating electrons emitting the light. The planes of vibration might be as numerous as the accelerating electrons producing them. A few planes of vibration are represented in A. All these planes can be represented as radial lines in B, or more simply in C, by vectors in two mutually perpendicular directions. This pair of vectors in C represents all the vectors of B resolved into horizontal and vertical components. The simplest schematic of C with equal length perpendicular vectors represents unpolarized light. Polarized light would be represented by a single vector or two vectors of unequal length. The details of polarizing materials I leave to your textbook reading. For now, I'll just say that a sheet of Polaroid has a specific polarization axis and is transparent only to light with electric field vibrations parallel to that axis. Note that non-polarized light from the flashlight can be represented by the blue horizontal and vertical components. And the vertical component of that light passes through the pair of Polaroids. The rope being shaken between slats of fences gives the idea. But note that when the pair of Polaroids are crossed, that is, with the polarization axes at right angles to each other, the light is blocked. Likewise for the vibrating rope through the fences when their axes are crossed. Physics teacher Janie Head leads her class into a study of polarization by comparing how a rope shaken through the metal grating relates to light passing through a Polaroid. She has students shake a rope at various orientations through the metal grating. The grating and the fences are good analogies of polarization behavior. Much of the light reflected from non-metallic surfaces is polarized. The glare from glass or water is a good example. Except for perpendicular incidence, the reflected rays contain more electric field vibrations parallel to the reflecting surface whereas the transmitted rays contain more vibrations at right angles to the vibrations of reflected light. This is analogous to skipping flat rocks off the surface of a pond. When the rocks hit with their faces parallel to the surface, they easily reflect. But if they hit with their faces tilted to the surface, they refract into the water. The glare from reflecting surfaces can be appreciably diminished with the use of Polaroid sunglasses. The polarization axes of the lenses are commonly vertical because most glare reflects from horizontal surfaces. My daughter-in-law Ludmilla nicely illustrates polarization with Polaroid sheets. On the left, when their polarization axes are aligned and the pair is transparent. When the axes are crossed at right angles to each other, light doesn't get through. 
The intriguing situation is shown when she inserts a third Polaroid between two crossed Polaroids. Aha! Light is transmitted. Why? It's tempting to give the answer to this question, but if every question posed to you was followed by an answer, your knowledge would not be the best. So I won't give you the answer here, and only say it's a matter of considering vector components of light vectors. Have a go at it, and to confirm your answer, look at Appendix D in your conceptual physics textbook. But please don't look at the solution before you've worked it out on your own. In summary, polarization occurs only for transverse waves, and in fact is an important way of determining whether a wave is transverse or longitudinal. I want to leave you with a question. First, little Nellie Newton wants to get the best sunglasses for automobile driving. She sees three sets of polarized sunglasses with polarization axes indicated by the straight lines. Which pair of eyeglasses is best suited for Nellie while driving? A, B, or C? Think about that. Until next time, good energy.